Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Unsettled Journey. In today's video, we are going to share with you how we pack and what we pack in our suitcases. To encourage you all to join in on our journey, just hit that subscribe button and that bell icon below to get notified about our next video. We're going to be sharing with you how and what we pack in a carry-on size suitcase and also what we pack and carry in a full-size checked suitcase. Let's get to packing. All right, so I'm going to be taking you through our carry-on bag. This is the one we've been using recently. It is a Mickey Mouse bag, but I like this particular type of carry-on because I like having access to things right from the front. I've owned those kind of plastic suitcases in the past, but they don't have pockets in the front. For me, it's just more convenient. So, uh, oh, what the f Just kidding, they're usually not in there, but this is an overview of what's typically gonna be in our carry-on. And so let me walk you through the items that we have here. In the top, we just have my laptop and my hard drive, so obviously for entertainment purposes, having your computer and a hard drive with TV shows and movies is super essential for really long flights and really any flight, um, because if you're flying an airline that doesn't necessarily have the free entertainment, this is a really big lifesaver to just have while you're on a flight. In the back here as well, we have, which is especially handy these days, antibacterial wipes that we can take with us not only to disinfect the airplane tray tables and seats but also when we get to where we're going whether it be a hotel or an Airbnb we can wipe down various surfaces that we may not think is clean and then just a travel size hand sanitizer we always bring along as well. So for the base of this bag here I'm usually wearing this but I just put it in there um, because I like having things on me, so I wear this as a fanny pack. So usually I will have this on me to just have any items like ID, passports, um, important things that I wanna keep close to me and on me. But I like this particular one because if you unzip the middle, it will actually unfold into a backpack. And the top has faded because I've had it for a really long time. I can put my laptop in here and that way I don't have to necessarily fish it out from the bag once it's in the overhead compartment because you have to wait for the seatbelt sign and it can be a little bit annoying. So right before we get on the plane, I unfold this into a backpack and I put everything that I want throughout the flight in here. So another item I like to bring on the plane with me, which usually goes in my backpack along with the laptop, is something to read. So any type of magazine um, or shopping catalog, just something to flip through. Parts in the flight where you may be taxiing and you can't use your laptop. Something else besides the airplane magazine that they have in the seat back pocket. Something that I like to read and look through though I usually just look through the pictures. I don't actually read much, but this is just something that we had been traveling with recently. Also in our carry-on is going to be this document holder, which I got from my last job. So I will just keep important documents in here, anything that we have that we need to take along with us for our current trip, things like confirmations or any other necessary paperwork that we may need. Also in here, I've got a reusable water bottle, which I just keep empty and refill it once we pass security. This one obviously came from Las Vegas, from the Wynn Resort, but I just always have a reusable water bottle. That way we can stay hydrated while we're traveling and we don't have to pay the airline or airport prices for um, water bottles. The next thing I always keep and travel with in the carry-on is um, an extra outfit because I've gotten stranded before in airports or in cities where my checked bag is on to somewhere else but I'm stuck somewhere and I don't want to be stuck without a clean pair of clothes so outfits and clothes in the checked bag but I always try to keep an outfit or two in the carry-on just in case something like that happens again. Now, for the domestic airlines we have here in the U.S., they no longer serve 
very good meals for free. You usually have to purchase that, so I will always bring some type of snack. In this Tupperware, I just have a package of Pop-Tarts and some Nutri-Grain bars. That way you can stay full on the airplane because typically all they give you these days is just maybe a bag of peanuts or a bag of pretzels. So it's always good to travel with some sort of snack to hold you over until you get to your destination. Something else we have, which we like to travel, obviously international, is going to be a converter for your outlet. So this, I believe, is for three different outlets for you. You have Australia, you have Europe, and you have the UK. So it's very handy when we're traveling. It doesn't matter where we end up. Um, we'll be able to plug in at least one of our devices at a time. Another item I like to travel with because I never know if I'm gonna get stranded or not is uh, my toothbrush, just a spare toothbrush, and then a travel size toothpaste. Obviously you're not allowed to bring full-size toiletries while you travel, especially um, liquids or anything that might be considered a liquid. So I have a travel size toothpaste in here. So to go along with the laptop, of course you have to be able to listen to it. So I use these Bose noise canceling headphones, which really have saved a lot of headache when it comes to just long flights and the noise that generates when you're traveling. These noise canceling headphones are awesome. These are the over ear ones. They also come in in ear. I personally like these. These are super comfortable for me. And I usually also keep a AAA battery in here, but since we're not traveling, there's one missing. I will have to replace that before we leave again. I really love these for watching movies, listening to music, because it totally eliminates a lot of the sound in the jet, whether it be crying babies or just the jet noise. So I always travel with that as well as because we are always watching movies, usually on just one device, um, we bring a travel splitter so that we can listen to both things. You just plug in two or three sets of headphones so that you can both listen to the same movie. Because I love to listen to music wherever I go, I always travel with this Bose mini speaker. It's a Bluetooth speaker, but you could also connect an auxiliary cord in there if you didn't have a device, for example, that wasn't Bluetooth. But this, for as small as it might be, has pretty impressive sound and I like having this whether it be somewhere remote where we can listen to music or just while we're getting ready, when you're in the shower, whatever it is. I love having music wherever I go so I always travel with some sort of Bluetooth speaker. Now something that Matt actually got me for a holiday this year, which I've been traveling with every single time now, is this fun item <laughs> that buckles into the seat in front of you. So it obviously wouldn't work if you were in the very first row, but we're usually not. So you buckle it into the tray table in front of you and it allows you just to prop your feet up for a more comfortable seating position because we fly economy most of the time and having your feet propped up is just a more comfortable sitting position than without this. So I've loved having this. Matt actually got this from Amazon where you can find most of everything, but if you do want this, we will leave the link in the description box below for the footrest. So just like this pocket, this particular bag has one on both sides. So in the other pocket, the other mesh pocket, I keep just some items for eating. So I have a package of reusable gold straws, which I use while traveling. And then the last thing that I usually have in my carry-on is this portable charger. Now this is an all-in-one portable charger that I recently got. It's a Halo Bolt charger and it is safer flying. You can use this in flight. You can carry it on the plane with you. But I like it because not only does it have a flashlight, which is handy for when the power goes out, it has two USB chargers, which you can charge at the same time, so that would be both of our phones. It can even jump your car if you were maybe renting a car, or we, sometimes we use it when we're here at home in Georgia. Um, it came with the adapter to jump your car. Best thing about it is that it actually has 
an AC adapter, so it's kind of like anything that you can plug into the wall, you can plug into this and you can power it on. And then this is the indicator for how much battery is left in the actual charger. I absolutely love this and it doesn't weigh that much. So I love this because we can either charge our phones or my laptop or any device that we're traveling with and we can always stay connected to power. So that about does it for what we typically have in the carry-on suitcase. Now Matt is going to take you on and show you what we have in our checked bags. So I'm going to show you right now how I pack my t-shirts and the first thing you would want to do to help avoid as many wrinkles as possible is to roll your shirts. Now I'm sure you've heard of this before but I'm going to show you my technique in order to roll them so they don't get wrinkles in them. So what you're going to want to do is first of all fold in the sleeves and the next thing you're going to do is fold your shirt in half. And you're going to try and get as many wrinkles out as possible before you start to roll it up. So the next thing then is to just start rolling. Now I prefer to start top down, but it really doesn't matter as long as you roll it up. And you just want to make sure you're not getting any wrinkles or anything that may come about. And there you have it, a nicely rolled shirt. As mentioned previously, depending on where I'm going, I always like to pack a little bit of both, just in case, because you never know what the weather conditions are going to be. I always like to, if you go into a warm place, pack more shorts and then just one extra pair of long pants just in case maybe say like a restaurant is cold or you know it may get cold and rainy at night, you just never know. So it's always good to have a variety of both and vice versa if you go into colder weather. So now I'm going to show you my technique on how to pack these. And what you want to do is sort of make, and it works best with four pairs. Um, but you can also do three or two or however many you like. And it works best if you just lay them out as such so that the bottoms are in the middle overlapping one another. So then what you would want to do is you want to take opposite ends. Say we started with this one because this is on the bottom. And then this is on the other side. So you want to fold it on over as such. And then you want to take this in and then you want to take this in. So then the next biggest or longest pair of pants you want to make on the outside, which would be obviously these long pants, and you just want to bring them up on over here. So then when you flip it around, it's all nice and flat. So now would you believe we fit four pairs of pants right in this pile? So now I always like to pack my socks inside my shoes because, well, that just makes sense. So I like to roll up my socks and just stuff them right inside like that. Now eventually, when you have all your socks together, when you pack these shoes, you want to pack them on top of one another as such. Now I've taught you my techniques on how to pack some of these things. Let's move on to packing the suitcase. Alright, so now we're going to move on here to the checked bag, and this is probably one of the most important bags um, because, well, it's the one you're going to be paying for. <laughs> so you want to pack this wisely. So the first thing you're going to need is a packing list, and we've provided one in the link in the description below, so you can go click on that, and it's a list of everything you could possibly think of you might need on your trip. So let's move on to the checked bag. So you want to make sure you have a very sturdy and lightweight bag. Now this bag right here weighs 10 pounds, so you definitely want to make sure you have a lightweight bag because that already brings our packing now down to 40 pounds. So I do want to mention before we get started here that we would recommend that you get packing cubes because we have found them very useful and we've provided a link in the description below so you can go check them out. So you're going to be able to know where everything's at as well as keep things separated and organized. So you stick any item inside of the packing cube and then it's as simple as that. You just zip it right up. So it just keeps things very organized. That way things aren't scattered about throughout the transport process. And also makes packing a lot easier. And it's literally just like a jigsaw puzzle. So now what I always do, especially for shoes, is carry a shoe bag, you know, just in case, because you don't want your shoes getting all dirty and dirtying up your clothes. Of course, your toiletries as well. Honestly, bags may seem a little bit annoying, so you have to zip them and unzip them, but it makes things a lot easier because you know where everything's at. 
So then, while you're on your trip, I always take a empty garbage bag for your dirty clothes because you don't want your dirty clothes getting up with your other clothes and so on and so forth. Now, if you do happen to have an extra packing cube, you can go ahead and use that. Um, but I always just take a garbage bag along. So something else you will definitely not need to bring along with you is a towel. We think it's a waste of space and weight in your suitcase, mainly because a lot of other hotels, resorts, everywhere you're going has towels provided there, so you don't need to bring one yourself. So now for nicer clothes, I like to keep these as well as suits, ties, etc. up here in the upper compartment. That way they stay nice and flat and don't get wrinkled. As well as take a light jacket along just in case. And I also like to pack an umbrella just because you never know what the weather is going to do. Now of course you know me, I always take my camera along, but however I am filming on my camera right now, so I'm going to show you some of the techniques I use to pack my lenses. Now you're probably thinking packing your lenses in your checked bag, just because I'm very confident in my packing technique as it has not failed me yet. So some of the lenses I just like to pack up just like that inside my socks or any spare clothing items. And then you can just go ahead and rest them right inside your other clothes. Of course you want to layer them and make sure there's a nice barrier around them. So as you can see here, this is literally cut packing in half. Say if you have a significant other, they have plenty of room to put their items in here as well and it saves you money in the long run. So we hope you enjoyed the video and found some useful tips and tricks that you can use in your travels. So thanks for sticking around and watching today's video. We hope you found it as useful as we do and that you can use some of these packing tips in the future. So do you have any packing tips? Please comment below and give this video a big thumbs up and we'd like to hear about your packing tips as well. So we encourage you to subscribe and join in on our journey to get notified about our future travel. We'll see you in next week's video.